Hello, world. What separated your deep ball from everybody else? My deep ball, it has a little secret sauce to it, man. <laughs> I never get too high, I never get too low, but just keep moving. The, the whole story is Carlos never beat me in any kind of sports in, in, in high school. Welcome to the Orange is the New Black Podcast. I'm your host, Ace Boogie, joined by my co-host, Zim. Zim, say what's up. Hello, world. How's everybody doing this evening? You are rocking with the Orange is the New Black Podcast. We have a really, really good show. We got, you know, we we stay connected. And, I mean, I don't know how we do it, but we just keep on doing it. But we got none other than the wide receivers coach, Troy Walters, of the Cincinnati Bengals with us this evening. How you doing tonight, Troy? How you feel? I'm feeling great, man. Feeling great. Uh, getting ready for the biggest game of our uh, our lives. No, nah, that's facts. That's facts. So obviously, Troy, you came on with the Bengals in 2020 as the assistant wide receiver coach. Uh, obviously, that was a year where after you get Joe Burrow, a lot of people saw T. Higgins sitting up there, including myself. Uh, what was it about T. Higgins and about that process that made you want to make him the pick at 33? Yeah, we knew going into the draft that we needed to address the receiver position. We needed uh, some more playmakers, young playmakers. We knew AJ was was a great player, but he was getting up there in age, and and so uh, we knew going in that we needed to draft a receiver early. Um, obviously, we took Joe Burrow at number one, but then when T when he was still there, we had him as a first round pick, and when he was still there at at the beginning of the second round, um, it was a no brainer. You know, his size, his athleticism. Uh, athletic ability. He's still young, so he still had room to grow. And we just saw a, a guy that could learn from AJ, learn from some of the older guys. And then when his time was when his time was uh, when he was ready, he would uh, he'd be a phenomenal uh, football player. I appreciate that, that insight on that too. But was it a situation just keeping on with T. Higgins? Was it a thing when when you got to day two where like where everybody was like in disbelief, or was there like a plan where the, that you all actually thought that T. Higgins would be there? And then I'm gonna ask you something crazy. Was there another guy that 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 you felt like the Bengals were targeting around that same time? You know, you just never know with the draft. You know, we had we had T. as a, as a first round talent. Uh, but you just never know what other teams are thinking. Uh, so when he was still there, you know, we were ecstatic. Uh, you know, he was uh, he was at the top of the list. There were, you know, one or two other receivers. Michael Pittman was another guy that was that we had high. Um, but when it came to T, uh, Bob McNeil went down there for the for the pro day and and sat with T and talked to him and understood he was a great young man and character and loved football and. And uh, and so just his upside and and he played at Clemson. He's used to winning, winning championships. He had that, uh, you know, that that's big around here, bringing guys in that have that have won games, won championships. Um, he just it was a no brainer. And, and we're glad to have him. No, that's fact. So obviously you knock it out of the park with T. Then you come back 2021 and Jamar Chase is staring you in the face. Just talk about that process, because we had a civil war in, in Bengals Nation with. Panay and, and Chase, but it's obvious that the Bengals made the right pick. But what was just the mindset? Because a lot of people thought that we were just going to go with the offensive lineman. Yeah, it was. We needed we needed a receiver, a playmaker, a difference maker. Um, we needed offensive linemen. So it, the the need was there for both positions. Uh, we just felt as an organization that uh, Jamar was going to make an immediate impact um, with his uh, athletic ability, with his skill set, and then with his relationship with Joe Burrow. We felt like he could come in and, and 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 play right away and be dominant right away. Uh, it was funny. I was I had a Zoom meeting with him leading up to the combine, leading up to his pro day, and I asked him, uh, you know, what he was going to run the forty in. And most guys you ask, they're telling you four two, you know, four one, four three, and you know, he said four. He ho- he was hoping four five, and so I thought that was kind of strange, like four five. You you know, top five pick four or five. And so when I went to his pro day, he busted a four, three mid, mid to low four threes. And I told him he, he's a smart man, you know, under promise and over deliver. And, uh, <laughs> you know, and, and that's what he did. And, you know, had a phenomenal pro day. And as I got to, t- I, as I got to know him, uh, just a phenomenal young man, um, very humble, uh, great head on his shoulder. And uh, we knew that when he came, he would be able to pick up the offense and and uh, do some special things. 
Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, I guess like some of the stuff you were saying too about like T and we were talking about um, and, and we've had a we had a chance to meet T's mom. We interviewed her, uh, her on the show. We also interviewed uh, Jamar's father. And he was like, man, I didn't even really we didn't even talk to the Bengals, uh, you know, like up into the draft. Do you think like was there concern when you were going into the draft that another team would leap in front of the Bengals? And if so, what was that team? <sighs> Like I said, you just never know what, what teams are thinking. You know, we kind of mapped it out and we felt pretty good about him still being there. We didn't know what Atlanta would do. You know, we we thought that they would take uh, a skill guy and they end up taking Kyle Pitts. Um, and then San Francisco, you just never knew if they're going to take a quarterback, if they're going to, you know, what they were going to do. Um, so it's always some tense um, uh, moments leading up to your pick. Um, but, you know, Thank God that he was still there, and and once he once he was still there, it was a no brainer, and it didn't take us long to 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 turn in our selection. When when you talk about these guys, we call them amigos, and we talked about T Higgins, we talked about Jamar, but there's also Tyler Boyd. Just talk about, I guess, what all of those guys kind of bring in their own unique way. Yeah, Tyler's he's the veteran. He he he's the uh, he's the pro. He he's he's been around. He's been here during the tough times. And so he kind of sets the culture, um, comes to work every day. I've never seen him in a bad mood or take a day off, um, rarely misses a practice. Um, so he's a, so he's a, uh, the tone setter. Uh, guys kind of gravitate towards him. Uh, very funny, keeps things light. Um, but when it's time to work, he works. And then that's kind of how we are as a group. You know, we, we like, love to have fun, kid around, joke around. But when we step foot on the field, um, it's time to produce and we know we're gonna have fun when we do produce and and so Tyler he, you know he's he, he's the he owns the slot he's crafty uh, he knows how to get open knows how to separate awesome hands doesn't drop the ball um, so he's he's mr consistent and then T Higgins uh, dynamic you know a long athletic long catch radius, you know, so when the ball's in the air, he's going to go make the play. Really has come a long way from uh, since last year. You know, those 50-50 balls uh, last year he didn't quite bring in at times. This year, um, you know, he's made those plays, and it's really elevated his game. He's become a better route runner. He's faster than a lot of people think. Uh, so his speed combined with his size and length makes him a pretty uh, dangerous receiver. And then Jamar, he's just explosive, you know, um, really has a running back body, running back mentality, playing receiver, uh, you know, explosive down the field, can separate, strong. Uh, you'll see a lot of times guys just fly off on those 50-50 contested balls. Guys will just just fly off of them, and he won't even nudge them that much, but he's just, he, he's just strong upper body, strong lower body, great with the ball in his hands. Uh, so we've got a great combination of guys that can – really do it all man look you talk about the veteran <laughs> how crazy is that to say veteran the guy's 27 like in the prime of his career like that's how crazy like i we talk we do these things now a lot on twitter spaces and we do the stuff that you guys can't do and that's talk to other teams <laughs> about this wide receiver core and that's how ace came up with the migos that's how i've come up like i you've probably never seen me before but i've absolutely been telling the world this is the greatest wide receiving core the world has ever seen and i mean that a hundred times do you feel like you've seen it? is there another wide receiving core that you thought like you like maybe people aren't even thinking about that you could think of maybe a trio that you that you would say is maybe on the level of, of the migos but you know back when i played in indy we had uh reggie wayne marvin harrison brandon stokely and i think one year all three went for a thousand yeah. With, with 2008. Yeah, no, 2004, <laughs> I believe. Yeah, four, I think. 2004. 2004? You thinking? Yeah, you thinking of the Cardinals? The broke all the, the okay. uh, passing records. Yeah, I want to say all three of them went for a thousand. They did. Yeah, I remember they did. That. So yeah. all day, every day. I know that's probably you probably have your own goals, but I tell people we're gonna have three guys with a thousand yards. Yeah. So I was very upset that Tyler oh, Boyd didn't play the last dance. Yeah, that, that was my goal as well this year, and I felt like we could handle it, but. uh you know, it is what it is, and, and those guys had, had great years. And and the thing about our guys is uh, they don't complain. You know, Tyler maybe went uh, 
a game or two with not having a lot of uh, targets, not having a lot of catches or yards, and he he didn't care. He just wanted to win. The same right. for Jamar and T. Those guys are just they're team players. They they love when their other their teammates have success, and 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 uh, and when their numbers call, they're ready to make plays, and and they're excited when other other guys make plays. So that's the culture of, of the group. That's the culture of the team. You know, we we have unselfish guys on this team that that put the team first. No, you're right about that. It's funny because me and Zen, we actually went to the, the Jags game, Thursday Night Football, and after that, um, the entire wide receiver court, we saw them out later that night, and they went all went together. And even Puka and, and everybody we stuck together, and we thought that that was so dope. Um, and that, that really meant a lot, just that statement of them being all together and, and having fun, audentating all of those guys being out and supporting each other was definitely a dope thing to see after that game. Yeah, I asked, you know, I asked the guys coming into this season what they wanted to do differently. What did they want, you know, change wise? And one of the things that I think Mike Thomas said that he wanted us to be closer. Now, last year you had COVID. You really couldn't hang out much. Um, so it was tough. But uh, that's one of the things that wanted to make sure that we were a tight brotherhood and guys had each other's backs and, and we played for one another. Felt like they've done that and, 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 uh, they enjoy being around each other. And so as we go through the playoff and the playoffs, it's almost like, you know, you don't want to lose because you knew that would be the end of being around these guys. And right. So after, you know, after we beat uh, Las Vegas, it's, Hey, we got one more week together after we beat Tennessee. Hey, we got one more week. And then after this game it's like, Hey, we got two more weeks together. And so it's just <laughs> being around the guys. That's, that's, that's the fun part. Yeah. We're trying to win a super bowl, get a ring and all that, but it's just the, just being around the guys day in and day out, man. That's that's it's been it's been special. Yeah, every every time somebody retires from the league or something, that's the number one thing that they say is like, man, I'm gonna just miss just traveling with the guys, being with the guys, being part of a team. Um, you were talking to us off air about coming into like the the expectations. I think for like that maybe the standard that you held for these guys coming in. Can you talk to the people kind of just reiterating some of the stuff that you were saying preparation wise for like the, the weather and getting these guys ready and how that coincide with your belief of going to the Super Bowl? Yeah, I, I, I told them uh, I told them at the beginning of the year that uh, we're going to the Super Bowl. We're going to win the Super Bowl. You know, I told him that at the beginning of the year and no matter what happened after a tough loss in New York or or two bad losses, you know, uh, Pittsburgh and or not Pittsburgh, but um, Cleveland. Uh, we lost to the Jets and then Cleveland and then uh, Chargers and San Francisco. Right after that, I told him, hey, our standards don't change. You know, whether we win or we lose, whether we're 8-0 or 0-8, we're going to come to work. Uh, we're going to prepare and we're going to get ready to go out there and, and, and play ball. We're not going to get too high when things are good or too low when things are bad. And I always kept in mind that, you know, we're going we're going we're gonna to win the division. We're going to go. We're going to the playoffs. And uh, probably halfway through the season when it started getting cold, you know, I told those guys, hey, we need to start preparing like playoffs. And, and one of the things we I told them was we need to you can't wear all these layers and we're outside and it's cold and put all these hoodies and all we got to play. We got to practice like we're going to play. So Thursdays was, you know, game day and whatever we're going to wear in the game. And you notice we don't wear sleeves or hoodies and all that. We're, we're no yeah. sleeves. And so I told him Thursday, we got to get used to playing in the cold because in order to win uh, AFC championship, you're going to you're going to play in the cold. And uh, they started they bought into that and they come out Thursday with no sleeves on. And and uh, and so just speaking things into existence, man, and and and. And, and just uh, always uh, showing them where we're going uh, is important to me. And those guys have bought in and, and they believe it. And so I don't care what happened. We're down 21-3 to Kansas City. There was no lack of trust, lack of faith. We believe that we're going to find a way to win. Went to overtime. They won the toss. You know, oh, Mahomes is going to take them down and score. And there was no panic. Hey, defense is going to go out and stop them. And all we need is a field goal. So sometimes right. not winning a toss in overtime can be an advantage. And we right. used it to the advantage. Defense stopped them and we made a play. So some of those things, man, but the standard's been set in this in the building that we we wanted to win it all and and we felt like we were good enough, had a had a great team to to do so. 
No, that that's facts, man. I, I'm, I appreciate you for talking through that and and talking about the mindset. And one thing, like I've always had faith in this team just from the get go. I think a lot of Bengals fans, after we we beat the Ravens like that early in the season, a lot of us were saying, you know, hey, the the Bengals could go to the Super Bowl. And I remember other fans from other fan bases were calling us delusional and all kind of crazy stuff like that. Um, and you kind of talked about it with the, the playoff run. And obviously a lot of Bengals nation had confidence in it, but it is kind of, it kind of infuriates us as fans to watch after we beat the Raiders. Right. And then they say that we got lucky with a call, uh, a phantom call. Then we go into Tennessee, beat them on the road. And then the story is, well, that was only Ryan Tannehill. Even before that, it was, it was none of that. We weren't supposed to have a chance. Then we go in, like you said, come back from 21 to three against Pat Mahomes uh, because of our defense and because of our offense going out and doing what needed to be done and special teams with McPherson at the end of the game. But the, the storyline is Mahomes choked it. Does that chip continue to grow for the Bengals? Um, and are you guys hearing this? And is that something that you want to put to bed in the Super Bowl? You, you know, we don't really pay attention to outside noise. Um, I know, you, you, you know, guys are on social media. Um, so there, we're not, we're not deaf to it or blind to it. We see it, we read it, but, um, you know, it's about us. It's about us preparing e each day. Um, we know every game, um, any team can win. It's the best team that day. And so, uh, you know, we, we, we really have taken upon ourselves to make it all about us and, and our preparation and what we do and the team, the games we've lost, it's really been us turning the ball over yes, thank you. Um, <laughs> a lot. And, and, you know, and defense not making a critical stop. So we feel like if we just play mistake free football, then we can be the best team out there. And uh, and and people still think of the Bengals as a, a losing organization and this and that. And, you know, and uh, which is fine. But, uh, you know, we don't we don't really care about what the other outside noise thinks of us. We know what we are. We know who we are. And uh, we've been focused in that way to take take care of business one week at a time. Well, if you're ever looking for some bulletin board material, just hit me up because I got it all ready. I keep receipts every single day of my life and I go back and I follow up on them guys. So if you ever need something, just send them my way. I'll be sure to send you whatever you guys need because there's been a lot of people that doubted it, especially the Jamar Chase pick, especially early on in the season, uh, preseason. Drop the drops got perpetuated. It, it, it got it got heightened and all this other crazy stuff that I didn't like. Um, but it is what it is. As we move forward, let's talk Super Bowl. Biggest day of our lives, biggest game of our lives coming up right now. What are you thinking is going to be the key? Just let's let's take it to the team perspective. Let's not just take it wide receivers. Like what? Like mentally, not not game plan wise. Like mentally, what is the 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 mindset? coming into this game is it any different than any other week is there something different that you all have to do in order to win no it's, it's still a football game it's still one between the lines there's still going to be 100 yards there's still going to be you know it, it, there's really no difference when you get on the field in this game and in the first game of the season that's what i told the guys as we entered the playoffs and, and started preparing for vegas you know it's the playoffs but it's still football it's still um, there's no really no difference in the first game of the season in this game. The only difference is really it's finality. If you don't win, you, you go home. But in terms of our preparation, in terms of what you do on the field, it, just do what you've been doing. And, and that's the message that we can't get caught up in the Super Bowl and this and that. We got to just keep doing what we've been doing since week one, since we played uh, Minnesota and just keep doing what we do, have good week, have good days of preparation. Um, you know, make sure we're taking care of our body, make sure we're watching our film. And when you get out to California, there's going to be distractions. We got to limit those distractions and then and then play ball. And I, and I feel confident with the group of guys that we have that we're going to do so. We didn't come this far just to make it to the Super Bowl. We're trying to win it. And, nice. uh, and that's, the, that's, that's the message. How many like, I just want to ask you real quick. When, how many days are, are you all going to practice in California? Um, should be a normal uh, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, uh, three days. Saturday will be a walkthrough, and then you play play Sunday. Yep. So you know we're trying to take it just like a normal normal game week, and the preparation should be the same. 
um, the outside noise and attention, that's bigger. You know, you only have two teams, so you're going to have all the media covering it. So the outside noise becomes greater, which we got to try to limit um, as See, much as we can. That's why I asked you that. I'm like, how many days do I got to keep all these California people away? <laughs> like, I'm like, hold on, how many days we got to get? Like, when is the play? Like, like so how many days can I limit the opportunities for somebody to do some weird stuff out in California? Yeah, well, I mean, they, our guys are focused. I don't. Have I was about to say our guys are fine. It's the, yeah. it's those guys. It's the people yeah. out there. Like I don't want yeah. nobody distracting them. I want us like all the way one hundred percent. Don't have anything. to worry about that. You don't have to worry about anybody else. We, we're going to be focused. Guys know how to prepare. They 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 know how far we've come and 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 the ultimate goal, what we're trying to accomplish. And so uh, um, that's what it comes down to. And you can't get caught up in the hype and and all right. everything that's going on. We're we're going out there to win a game, not to party, not to um, you know, when the, when the uh, off the field battle, we're trying to when we step on the field, we're trying to beat the Rams and, and capture that uh, trophy. No, that's real. So one thing I want to ask you about, and and people are really learning about, is Joe Burrow, right? Like, when did you guys know that just Joe Burrow was special and could just um, do the special things that he's done with getting the Bengals to the Super Bowl in his second season? Well, the coaches, they I wasn't a part of the interview process at the combine when he was coming out. But they said uh, they knew right after that combine interview that he was going to be special. Just the way he retained information, um, the confidence that he that he showed the poise in front of a, you know, in front of a staff, a whole organization was phenomenal. And then for me, when he when he came here and, you know, we didn't have any OTAs because of COVID. And so basically he came in 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 August, I believe. That's when we started just first few days of practice, just the command that he had, uh, the veterans gravitated towards him, the confidence. Uh, and then what he did on the field, just the, the type of throws he made, the arm strength, the anticipation. Um, you knew that, uh, you know, you knew you had a special talent. Uh, you had a generational talent. You know, I played with Peyton Manning and, and uh, Kurt Warner. Uh, Dante Culpepper, you know, some great quarterbacks. And, and you know, you knew that he was one of those guys that was going to be able to lead an offense, lead a team to to, to great heights. Um, what I was going to say, um, you talked about the partying before, right? We're not going to do that. But afterwards, I'm going to need an invite or something. I just, I just need to get – I don't need to bring no cell phone, none of that stuff like that. I just need to know – where we at? That's all I want to know. Uh, but as, I'm, as, trying to, I'm trying to figure out the same. You know, I'm having my wife gotta, deal with all the details and and all that. Um, but I know we go ahead and take care of business and we win this game. There's going to be a lot of partying in California, in Cincinnati, and we get back to Cincinnati. Uh, so that's the plan. I, I'm going to tell the guys you can have a lot of fun and partying afterwards, and uh, right. if we go take care of business. Right, I was like, first day first. I, first I you know, I, 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 I'm definitely not trying to get you on track. And I, like you say, y'all got it taken care of. But when that game in, I'm gonna need that text. I'm gonna need something because I gotta be a part of this. Um, one of the other things I was gonna ask you, I think people probably want to know this, or maybe you can give us insight. What is like a weird habit or something that you notice? Like, well, let's stick to the amigos. Like, let's stick to like one of those three right there. What is something that you notice that maybe nobody else? probably wouldn't know is there like a superstition or anything that these guys do that you just think is like funny or something that you picked up on you sell this tv is funny i think sometimes he he does he's not a guy that goes crazy on social none of them really go crazy on social media yeah. so people are still yeah. trying to figure them out and i think that's a reason why yeah. a lot of times on tv they don't get highlighted as much too yeah they, they're all kind of you know quiet in their sense they don't they're not loud or boisterous or need the attention, so to speak. Um, one of the things that amazes me is the, uh, with these young guys now, the new generation is uh, like Jamar, he'll go out to practice and he'll have the diamond bracelet. And they're wearing jewelry, all sorts of diamonds. And just, just you know, I'm be afraid that I'm gonna lose it. The piece is gonna fall off, you know, I'm gonna lose it on the field. And, and just this generation, they just, they don't care. They gonna wear, the gold, the diamonds on wrist, 
chains and Troy, just, it helps you. It helps your game. Hey, it does. If, so if I, you would have if you would have put ice on like the whole time you were playing, I think your stats would have doubled probably, bro. That's what I was missing, huh? A hundred percent. Nobody's gonna coach this type of stuff. I've been telling these guys, get more chains. Joe Burrow, get a chain. T get another chain. Like this yeah. is what it takes to be a champion. Like, I'm just I believe it look good, but I'm good. So that's, yeah. that's what makes them look good then then uh but uh you know, we, we just try to have routine. You know, we uh, Saturday nights, we'll have our receiver meeting during special teams, the guys that aren't on special teams and we'll meet and walk through some things. And then we'll in our in our uh, when we're at home in our facility, we got a basketball goal. So oh. myself and Chase will we'll shoot free throws best of five and, and see who can win that. And um, so is you know, Chase the best one game. or is it T? Who, uh, who's the best basketball player out of out of those three? Who's the best one? Three, I would say Jamar is last. <laughs> T, you know, T's got he's got size. He's like Kevin Durant. Mm-hmm. Um, TB's a sharpshooter. Uh, so I have to say probably T number one just because of his length, and then TB and then uh, Jamar. So you said Jamar is last, okay? Because he yeah, was telling somebody him, he could average fifteen in the in the NBA. That's what he said. <laughs> he told somebody that he no, told a reporter. <laughs> he was lying. Um, yeah, he's lying. But uh, <laughs> now we have a good time, and you know, I don't know. I don't know if there's anything. You know, they're still they're they're so young. That's the thing that gets me is, you know, when I'm talking to Jamar, he's 21 years old, and mm-hmm. you know, and and then T's young. They're all young, and and uh, but uh, you know, they're just good people. That's the thing that I love about them is they're good, humble, hardworking, good guys to be around. <laughs> Man, I'm going to tell you one thing, and I think somebody commented in here, too, is like Auden Tate, right? That's that's one of the guys that, you know, he didn't – I'm sure the season didn't go the way that he wanted it to go or whatever. But, man, can you tell us any, like, insight on, like, Auden Tate um, throughout the year or whatever, like what like what his work habit is or yeah. anything that you just appreciate about Auden Tate? Yeah, because Auden, he, Auden is, he, he Auden. is a fan favorite, man. Yeah, he is. And I, and I know why because he, he comes in quiet, doesn't say a whole lot, but works his tail off, um, you know, just, just – I can't say anything bad about, about Tate. Um, and you know, didn't have the year he wanted. It was in he had a bunch of injuries, um, but I know he's the type of guy that's going to bounce back next year. And and um, you know, he's still got a lot of years left in the NFL. Big, physical, great hands, 50-50 contested catch guy um, that works his tail off. So he's going he's going to make it. He's going to be successful. Um, and the thing about Tate, just like the other guys, is although he didn't have a great year and it didn't turn out the way he wanted he's never complained never bickered never even now you know he's on the sideline cheering um encouraging the guys just as happy as anybody else and and uh and so that's he's got a great great character and he's he's gonna go he's gonna go a long way in this league still well Troy we want to be respectful of your time we appreciate you for for coming by is there anywhere where Bengals fans can follow you um on social media or anything like that yeah, right now I'm just on Twitter, Coach Walters one, uh, at Coach Walters one. Um, I'm not a big social media guy now that I'm not in college anymore. You know, I don't have to worry about tweeting and, and tweeting players and telling everybody where I'm at and all that. So, uh, but I'll get on because I like just seeing the Bengals love and what people are saying about the Bengals. So that's about the extent of me and social media is just getting on, seeing what they're saying about the Bengals. But uh, uh, Coach Walters won, and and I appreciate you everything you all do, the support, um, talking noise, talking trash, and uh, we look forward to going out there two weeks Super Bowl Sunday and and uh, giving the fans a great game and and trying to bring a championship back to Cincinnati. Oh, and congratulations as well with your son, man. We were glad that everything went well with Win, and that was yeah. a blessing, man. Appreciate it. God is good, and and watched over him and blessed him, and. Um, you know, he gets he receives all the glory. So uh, just been a been a 100%. great 2022 so far. Man, yeah, so is it gonna, ever? We're gonna have to well, send them amigos, amigos onesie or something like that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. We, we got some stuff. Yeah, y'all, for have, you. y'all have after you know, we take care of business. You be you have a lot of things to clothing gear to to, to make. 
Yes, yeah, sir. yeah. Now we we got some designs for you, and like you said, you guys gonna handle business and on social media. I promise you, I'm gonna hold it down. Me and Ace gonna hold it down like never before. Even if it ain't trash talking, it's gonna be a hundred percent the truth. I'm gonna give it to. I'm gonna give them the truth like they never heard it before. Sounds good, man. Appreciate y'all. All right, brother. Who that? We appreciate uh, Troy Walters for joining us. This has been. The Orange is New Black podcast and Zoom. We got to end this with a yes. Sirski. Hello, world. What separated your deep ball from everybody else? My deep ball, it has a little secret sauce to it, man. <laughs> I never get too high, never get too low, but just keep moving. The, the whole story is Carlos never beat me in any kind of sports in, in, in high school.